Hey guys! Okay, I am literally so excited about doing this video because if you recognize this setup, the no makeup, the hair's a little bit wet still, literally filming this on iPhoto on my computer, then you saw my first YouTube video because this is exactly how it was filmed and it was called Live Original. Just be you. And uh, it's just really funny that three years later, I'm sitting here tonight in a room, um, Live Fearless, my new book just came out, and I'm doing a video just like the one I first started with. And the reason I am doing that is because I was totally reminded today of God's faithfulness, just his incredible faithfulness. If you would have told me three years ago I would have wrote a book called Live Fearless, I would have been like, huh. <sighs> No, I didn't. Because, like, I was, like, the most anxiety-driven person that you could have probably met at the time. I was, like, afraid of everything. I was, like, probably having a panic attack or something crazy. And now, three years later, I'm sitting here, and I am literally, I can promise you and say this with full confidence, I am totally free of that fear. I am at full peace and I am confident in that that I don't have to fear my tomorrow worried if that's gonna run out um but I'm just living in freedom through what he's what he's given me and how he's changed me and for you right now that may not make any sense at all um but that's okay because if I would have heard that three years ago that wouldn't have made any sense to me either how could you live in freedom whenever things are scary? How could you say that you have freedom whenever literally we live in the most anxiety-driven world? And uh, for me, my whole idea of living fearless has totally changed. Because used to, I thought that living fearless was the absence of fear. Not having fear in life and things like scary just not affecting you. And that's actually not fully the case. Because living fearless is not that things aren't going to be scary and it's not that you're not even going to be in situations that are very fearful or that fear is going to be in the room. But it's that when you are in the face of fear, you carry peace. You carry a confident trust. You're able to speak to that fear knowing you have victory over it because your God is bigger than any fear in the room. And for me, risking even sounding crazy that I found complete freedom in God and I am in love with Jesus, I'll do it any day because I will never be afraid to speak to something that changed my life. Radically, 100% changed my whole entire life. If you are living in the pit of anxiety and fear right now, um, I really encourage you to get this book live fearless because this is not just about me finding freedom you know so it's so awesome that today three years later from that first video I can sit here and I can be talking about being free of fear but even beyond that to be able to say I'm free of fear but I also have a book out right now that's gonna journey with you and help you out of fear it's just absolutely crazy and it's something that only God can do and I promise you if God can do it in me and God can radically change my heart he can change your heart but it's gonna take you going on a journey and it's going to take you fully encountering his presence. And once you are met by that love, you're never going to be the same. I'm going to read you a little something just to kind of describe to you where I was at. In this chapter called um, Connect the Dots, I literally talk about the concept of how, like, sometimes our life is like a connect the dots, like, game. I don't know if you all ever, like, play a little connect the dots game. But, like, there are some dots and some situations and connect the dots that, like, you just kind of, like, want to stop because it's not even fun or it's boring or, like, you don't even want to, like, drag your hand all the way to this next dot because it's, like, super long and you don't really see the full picture and you're like, is this even going to turn out to be anything because I'm, like, not seeing it? And um, I don't know. That's how I always was. I was very impatient with connect the dots. And I realized um, when I was writing this book, when I would put in this chapter, connect the dots, that sometimes our life is like that. God is literally in a connect the dots game with us. And we get so impatient and we don't want to go to certain dots because we're like, oh, it's just going to be hard or it's going to be long or it's going to be dragged out. And I don't want to do that. And I don't see the full picture, God. And it's just like, oh, is this even worth it? It looks messy, all these different things. And it's so vital and it's so important that you continue to move and you continue to trust him where he's leading you because he sees the full picture. And although it may feel like a mess at the time, it may feel like hard to reach, you are the best and the safest place you can ever be is at the center of God's will. So continue to go in the direction that he's leading you. There was a lot of things in my life that I walked through that were hard and that were 
intense and that I wish I didn't have to go through but at the same time I look back and without those things in my life the big picture wouldn't be as beautiful without those things that I walked through this book wouldn't be out and so I kind of write about those hard times and those things in there but on page 99 I wrote uh, about Psalms 30 and it's where David's literally crying out to God and I said I feel like I'm literally living out this verse uh, in Psalms 30 where David cries to God and says you got me out of this mess God, my help, I yelled for help, and you put me together. God, you pulled me out of the grave. You gave me another chance at life. When I was down and out, then I stopped, and I said, but now I kind of feel like I'm living out this. And I said, I called to you, God. I laid my case before you, saying, so listen and be kind. Help me out of this. And you did it. You turned it into whirling dancing. You ripped off my black morning band and decked me with wildflowers. I'm about to burst with song. I can't keep quiet about you. God, my God, I can't thank you enough. And today I kind of feel like that. As I was going around New York, somebody said, how are you not even afraid to like speak like, I don't know, to all these interviewers about Jesus and to hold your Bible and wave it in the air? And I'm like, because he change my life and I will never be afraid to speak about something that changed my life so tonight when I got back into the room and I just started literally just thanking God just for just the confident trust that I built with him and the faithfulness he showed me and how he's never let me down and as I was just um worshiping and stuff like that I literally um heard this song playing in the background and I realized that my phone was playing worship music and there's a song it's called faithful to the end and um the words really got me, but it says, I, I'm actually going to pull it up and uh, sing this one part. Yeah. It goes like this. It goes, There wasn't a day that you weren't by my side. There wasn't a day that you let me fall. With all of my life, your love has been true. And with all of my life, I will worship you. So good. Um, I think the reason it got me tonight is because I realized in the past three years since I first did that YouTube video, although I would have never imagined I would be here, and although I went through a lot of different things, I can look back now and look at all those dots that God brought me through and realize that there wasn't a day that He wasn't by my side. It wasn't a day that he let me fall. And his love has remained so true. Each day in and day out, he has met me with love. And because of that, I will worship his name forever. I will praise his name in the middle of anywhere. I will not be afraid of the things that come at me, but I will speak the name of Jesus over them. And I will continue to live in freedom, being fearless, because I understand who I have on my side. And that is an amazing feeling. And I just want you to know that I don't want you to listen to this and be like, oh, that's awesome, say that you found that. Um, but I can't do that. No, you absolutely can. If I can, literally anybody can. If you feel the furthest away from freedom, listen, you're right where I was. You're right where you need to be. Fall on your knees right now. Pray. Ask God where he is. He'll come in. He'll invade the room. Start to declare psalms. Start to speak the name of Jesus. And you'll be amazed that when you feel gripped by fear, all of a sudden peace is going to invade the room and you're going to be you're going to be undone by by the meeting of love that God's going to God's going to do for you. But this is a journey that's going to help you a lot because it is a process and to see change happen things have to change. I had to go through a lot of different steps. I actually wrote most of my steps that I went through, actually pretty much all the steps I went through and steps that you can go through too. I wrote prayers that you can pray, scriptures you can read over yourself, places to take notes. There's so many things in here that is going to help you find your freedom, but ultimately it's going to be what you and God find in each other's relationship but i encourage you to get this book dive into it don't just read it but find freedom i love you guys from a sister to the sister to a sister to a brother from a friend to a friend always here for y'all and um this is all for you guys this is all for y'all love you